EBI is back and bigger and better than ever with 16 of the best absolute open weight competitors that we could find on the planet. This is by far our most stacked card ever. We got Abu Dhabi champions, we got IBJJF champions, Lucas Rocha, Bruno Bastos, Matias Denise, Rustam Chizia, Richie Boogeyman Martinez, Abraham Marte, DJ Jackson, Yuri Samoz, Amir Alam, Eddie Cummings, Gary Tonin. Even if you don't know any of the competitors, by the time you get to the finals, you will be so invested about uh, that final match and who's going to win. And you, you saw both of those competitors in three matches that same night. You see it all unfold and you get to that climax at the end. Now it's on and, and we got the most stacked card in EBI history. I mean, when you look at the names, that's legit. Obviously, I want to bring in the biggest stars in jujitsu for EBI. We had to put in our welterweight champion slash lightweight champion, Gary Tonin, in this. He, he was the first guy that came up when he heard of the absolute class and asked me, pulled him to the side. He was like, please put me in the show. And I did, of course, how couldn't I? Mean, he's our, our champion. Excited to be a part of this organization. But uh, I think this EBI 6 is just bringing it to the next level. Gary is just super entertaining for, for jujitsu. As far as I know, it's going to be the first truly televised American grappling event. You know, I mean, this is pretty exciting. I feel like I'm a part of history. The rule set and the structure of the competition is, is good for uh, you know, creating exciting matches. You know, people have to submit each other, otherwise they, you know, they, can't, uh, they can't really truly win uh, money or win the tournament. Gary comes and brings it. He's a big reason why EBI is where it's at right now. I feel as though I, I do have a, a great advantage in the fact that I've competed in several of their events at this point. Been to nearly all of them, whether to coach or whether to uh, compete. I'm very familiar with the rules. I'm very familiar with how the tournament works. Considering that you know I've won some of the events, uh, I'm very familiar with you know how to win. He's our biggest star. He's probably the most exciting grappler on the planet right now. I don't think it changes much for me, you know. Uh, I'm gonna use what I've learned through these past few events and try my best to submit all my opponents. During camp, we'll work some differing techniques, probably mainly focusing on inside position and trying to uh, keep weight off of us, you know, because we have such much larger opponents. We're just gonna do our best uh, to find ways to break or choke everybody. <laughs> he could take it all. He's very hard to submit. Husamar Pajaras wasn't ever close to submitting him. And then if you look at his performance in ADCC against Cyborg, up against Bouchesha, sure they beat him on points, but they couldn't submit him. And EBI obviously is a, a no point format. It's a submission only format. So I, don't be surprised if Gary takes this whole thing, but he's gonna have some serious competition. I mean, you got Eddie Cummings. He's the EBI featherweight champion. Being the featherweight champion, I still feel doesn't necessarily make me in any way a favorite to win this open weight tournament. Most of my competitors I'll be giving up 50, 100 pounds to, and they're all world champions in and of their own right, or at least extremely successful grapplers. The overall level of talent in this tournament is incredible, just because it was open to all weight classes. Put on some weight for this, his arms are looking beefy. He's no doubt the best leg locker that's ever lived. We're going to try to emphasize, you know, different setups and strategies that will hopefully be higher percentage against larger opponents. When we demonstrate grappling to, to the larger masses, I think the submission only style is what is easiest to understand and easiest to appreciate. I think we prefer training for the submission rather than training for the advantage of the sweep. That's what we want to show the world. I don't know how these IBJJF stars are going to translate into this format, they could do, they could win it all. I fight absolute often uh, on the tournaments. Of course, that's different. There's no points, no, no advantage, there's mission only, uh, no draws, you gotta go over time. Of course, I'm, I'm approaching for the overtime because there's a specific situations for the overtime. But besides that, all the same, training gi, no gi, jiu-jitsu, judo, wrestling, everything to be complete. Anybody could take this. Marcelo Garcia's best black belt, Matias Denise, can take the whole thing. I don't feel pressure when I'm competing, you know. I'm uh, because I'm always ready, you know. I feel like I, I give my best in training for any tournament, every type of tournament, any type of rules. And uh, I'm used to competing in absolute, you know. Those are gonna, I, I kind of like, you know, do the absolute. I, I believe like, uh, like I, I like to fight the big guys, you know. I like to, I like to, to fight hard, you know. A lot of good names on the line. 
Like uh, most of those guys already compete, already beat a lot of those guys. All those competitors always looking forward to, to, to fight hard, you know, always looking forward to the submission. Let's go there, do my best, win, and the money eventually is going to come. Yeah. Evandro Nunes. Every single tournament that I won, regardless of the federation, was my submissions. The titles that I have in the point system tournaments, I never won a single fight by points. Every single fight and all the titles that I achieved was by submissions. My, op my opponent felt his life was in danger and gave up. Since I'm a brown belt, I never won a single fight by points. So submissions is the only thing that matters. My personal approach to this tournament is the same as I'm rolling. Only one way to fight. I wouldn't fight different for the, for it doesn't matter the amount of money. I wouldn't fight for something that's not what I see as the martial art. From the bottom of my heart, I never wanted to compete. My Jiu Jitsu journey brought me world titles, American titles on the most recognized uh, federations. From the last two years, I won every single fight on the black belt, super fight and absolute division for the greatest tournaments, all of them. When you focus on not just to become a medal chaser, but focus on how to understand the art, you, the medals will also come together. I trained at Gracie Academy and training with Hiro and Hanner, it's something that just changed my entire world and perception of, of what Jiu Jitsu is. The amount of skill and understanding of, le of angles and timing and leverage, it's just something beyond that I never felt before. I'm able to sharpen my sword in a way that I never did before in my entire journey in Brazil. You got Yuri Samoa in there, he's a gold medalist from Abu Dhabi. The toughest opponent, it's myself. And I, I think that as long as I can go over there and give 100% of myself and, you know, overcome my own demons, uh, I'll do well. I just want to test myself against the best in the world. Representing 10 Planet, we got Richie Martinez, who has one of the best rubber guards on the planet, if not the best. He's got serious fire. His rubber guard is good enough to take anybody out, put a go-go plata on anybody. I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna have fun, I'm gonna enjoy it, you know, now there's a chance that I'm gonna be able to compete against Gary one more time. Gained 15 pounds for this. Richie Martinez is big now, he's, he's gonna be 200 pounds fight day. I'm gonna kill it this time, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smash, I'm gonna do the best that I could do to be able to smash everybody. He brings the fire. He does not know how to stall. He doesn't even know what it is. Richie Martinez, win or lose, he goes 100% after the submission. That's why he's in there. I wanna be the guy that's always put on the big show. You know, I wanna be the guy that's always representing on this big show. As long as there's an Eddie Bravo Invitational, I'm gonna always be pushing to be the top guy. You got Lucas Rocha. He's never done for a format like this. We'll see how he does. He might stuff everybody and smash everybody down and take that belt. Well, I have been competing in Russia, in Portugal, Brazil, well, here in the United States, and uh, uh, I'm very excited to compete the EBI. Different techniques, different te different submissions where we cannot use in a regular tournament, like heel hooks. People ended up losing those types of uh, techniques, and even like professors ended up not teaching those types of techniques since we the, the students cannot really use in regular tournaments. So the EBI bring us back and show us the, the old school jiu-jitsu again. Just go there, and I'm gonna give it my best. You got Rustam Chizian. Who's gonna submit that guy? This is first time for me, this, you know, this rules, this tournament, so I wanna go with the best, so. You have to be, you want to be champion, you want to like approve yourself. You can't tell yourself, you know, I made it this one, you know. I made it and I proud myself, you know what I'm saying. I know this is big and level uh, tournament. When you go to the like fight, this is it, like some visual wrestling, you know, grappling. Like just go and submit the guy, you know. And this what I'm like, this what I'm looking for, you know. Anybody in the jiu-jitsu world and the jiu-jitsu community, they know Rustam's very hard to beat. Grappler's Quest star and now he's progressed into an ADCC star. He's extremely hard to do anything to. He's got a tremendous defense. It's gonna be very hard to submit. Rustum, what do you do with Rustum? That guy is a savage. Costa Rican EBI qualifier winner. He, for, he submitted all four of his opponents. This is Fabian Bolaños. I mean, who knows how he's gonna do? He could surprise people. 
We have a $50,000 possible grand prize, 16-man tournament. Only the winner is gonna get paid. The winner has to win four matches to win the whole thing, but he only gets paid on the matches where he secured a submission, the matches where his opponent tapped. If he wants that 50,000, he has to win every match in regulation. EBI three and EBI four was for 20,000. Even at 20,000, I was like, wow, you know, like they're really, uh, you know, creating some momentum. This is some pretty big stuff. And now it's all the way up to $50,000. And I really think that dream that he had was starting to become a reality. Of course, the money is it's awesome, but better than the money is the title. You know, I really want to go there and like uh, get, the, get the job done. We love doing shows at the Orpheum in downtown LA. There's really no reason to do them anywhere else right now. It's just, it's, it's a lovely place. It's, it's epic, it's beautiful. Uh, the owner is amazing. If you wanna see live who wins the EBI Absolute Championship belt, go to Ticketmaster.com. Who's gonna win this? Bruno Bastos, Lucas Rocha, Matias Dennis, Gary Tonin, Rustam Chisiev, Eddie Cummings, Yuri Samoz, Abraham Marte, Amir Alam, Evandro Nunes, Fabiano Bellanos, Richie Boogeyman Martinez. Who's gonna win this thing? Sunday, April 24th, we're gonna find out. 5 p.m. Pacific time, live on UFC Fight Pass.